Hi guys, welcome back to the AGS tutorial. Um, we've been talking about GUIs, so in this um, video we're, I'm going to show you how to customize uh, a GUI a little bit more than we did in the last video. Um, the GUI that we did before has this sort of basic, uh, frankly really ugly look to it. And <laughs> the video, the GUI I'm going to show you isn't necessarily any better looking, but, <clears throat> but it, at least it shows you how you can um, customize the GUI. And um, also how you can actually customize um, the, 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 ba the basic look of your game. Um, or just, just one of the ways. Hopefully I'll get into a lot more ways that you can customize it. It doesn't have to look like this, I guess is what I'm saying. So um, <clears throat> the first thing that we're going to do is, if you notice whenever you play the game, let me see if I can find one here. Whenever you click on, I think, okay, type in a name. That's going to get annoying real quick. Um, but whenever you look at something, yeah, that's not what I wanted to do. It looks like there's a book. No. Well, remember before we had a message, a dialogue box that popped up on the screen whenever we looked at the books, and they said something like, um, there's a book on rat recipes there. And if you remember, let me put that back, because I want to show you guys what that looked like, and be, because that's what we're going to customize in this one. <clears throat> Room script. It was actually here. Remember, we commented this out. Um... Sammy walks over there. I'm going to comment that out. Sammy says it looks like a book. there's a book on rat recipes. And then before we had, we just had this, where he displayed this message, there's a book on rat recipes there. And let me remind you, you guys what that looked like. <clears throat> so my name is DF. Okay, so look there. Okay, this is the this is the this is actually a GUI right here. Uh, you don't really know that it's a GUI, but it is. It's it's a display. It's a it's a message that's displayed on the screen, <coughs> which you can customize how this looks. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got something in my throat apparently. But uh, if you remember a lot of the old Sierra games, um, well, actually all of the old Sierra games. Um, and I'll bring one up here. Freddy Farkas, for example. Whenever you looked at something, or whenever the narrator said something, there was a GUI, there was a dialog box, or a display, I should say, that came up. And that display was customized for that particular game. For example, in Freddy Farkas, you had a border around the, the dialog, um, and you had the text in the dialog. And it was a different color, you had the different borders, and, and things like that. So that's what we're going to go over in this video, <clears throat> how, to, how to do that. So the first thing that you want to do then is that display dialog there that the dialog that comes up when you use the display function um, is called a text dialog or a text GUI um, so what you can do is you can right click on GUIs and say it's actually called a, a text window GUI sorry you can click on new text window GUI <clears throat> and this will define a template if you will of all of the text windows that will be displayed in, uh, in your game. Um, this looks really ugly and crazy right now, the way, it, the way it shows you what it looks like. But basically what we want to do is, is I'll bring up the Freddy Farkas again, and the, there are several components to that Freddy Farkas display dialog window. There's, there's the, in this case, there's the guns uh, in the upper right, upper right and lower left, um, sorry, upper right and upper left corners, there's little guns that are displayed, little pistols, and then there's the border around the dialog box. There's the horizontal borders and the vertical borders, and then there's also the lower right and lower left corners of the GUI, which are actually different little graphics. These are all different graphics that have to be um, drawn individually, and the reason they have to be drawn individually is because as a developer, or when you're creating your game, you could be using the display dialog box to display a message of any length, basically, within your game. So you don't know how big to make this GUI. You want to make it expandable and shrinkable and change it so that, so that AGS can change the size of it and still be able to add these elements, to add the corners in there, to add the horizontal and, and vertical bars and things like that in there. So that's what, we're, that's what you have to do when you're developing a text window GUI um, within AGS. These arrows here that you see there's nine of them and you can click on the corner the upper left corner of this um, arrow and it sort of displays four little dots um, these are actually the the elements of your text window these are this is going to be the upper left corner of your text window this is the upper right corner of your text window despite the fact that it's not really in the upper right corner um, just ignore that but 
This is the upper right corner, the lower left, the lower right corner, sorry, and the lower left corner. And then these arrows here represent your uh, borders. So if I go up here to my sprites, I actually already have some sprites that I've imported um, that represent the borders of the windows. Um, <clears throat> this is just something I'd quickly put together. It's not great looking at all, but um, this is the upper left corner of the dialog. This is what I want it to look like. The upper right corner just sort of has a, a curly Q type, type border um, around it. Um, the lower left corner and the lower right corner, and then these here um, with the border going across the top, across the left, across the bottom, across the right. These are going to be the, the top left, uh, bottom, and right um, borders respectively. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I go back to my um, text window GUI here, so I've got the upper left corner here, and I've got the, um, the image property here, and I'm going to click on the ellipses button because I don't know the number. I go into GUI graphics, and here's the top left corner of my um, dialog box here. So I will um, click on it, use this sprite, and then it changed from the arrow, it changed to the upper left corner of my dialog. Now I'm going to go through each one of these. This is the top, so I'm going to go through and pick the top of my dialog, which is this one. This is the upper right corner. So I'll go through and pick the upper right corner. This is the left. Um, the right. And you'll see exactly what this looks like, and this will, hopefully this will all become clear once I run the game. Because uh, in the goo in the editor, it doesn't really look right. I mean, it doesn't look like any. It's gonna look. It doesn't look like it's gonna be very good. Uh, very good um, text window. You can't really tell what's going on unless you know really have have seen it before. But here I've got all the elements. I've got the corners and I've got the edges here. So that's really what we need to do. And now what we want to do is go in, there's one more thing we have to do before we run the game, and that's go into general settings. And we have to tell the game to use this GUI, this GGUI1 that we just created. We have to tell it to use that for text for um, for text windows. So if you go down near the bottom here, um, it says text output, and there's an option under text output that says um, custom text window GUI. And by default, it's zero. In other words, use the default GUI that's built into AGS. But we want to use the GUI we just created, which is GUI number six. So I'll type in six here. It wants a number and not a name. You type in six, which means that it will use GUI number six for all text windows. So let's run the game and just see how that looks. Just, just based on what we did. This is our name dialog. Forget that one. Now, our display dialog comes when we look at these books. So let's look at them. Okay, so now notice that you see the little squiggly. Now, now notice across the top, it's a really narrow, um, wide, and, and short um, dialog. And you see that it repeated that top graphic. It just repeated it over and over and over again. And then it draws the corner, and then it draws just as much um, vertical as it needs to, draws another corner just as much horizontal as it needs to. And so you see how the, it puts those pieces together almost like a puzzle. Um, you know, in Freddy Farkas, these corner pieces here would have been um, would have been pistols, for example, and then these bottom, you know, um, these bottom ones. That kind of looks, it look, the the dialogue looks silly, and I wouldn't use this dialogue. I just put this together, you know, really quickly. But now notice there's a little bit of a problem in that the the text the the color of the borders here is kind of um, I don't know what color this is, but it's a different color than this gray background that's on the um, that's here. So let's fix that. There's a couple of ways you can fix that. The first way is you can define, I'm going to go back to my GUI, and there's a background color. Uh, by default, that's 8, which is this gray color. But um, if I actually use the background color that matches this background here that I have in my, in my borders, which I've cheated and I know that it is... 27243 and again I use this by using the colors dialog which we talked about in an earlier video. Now that changed the color to this purpley looking color that that sort of now matches the graphic. And now I'm going to rerun it again and you don't get that gray box anymore that we got earlier. So now the whole thing is is the same color and it looks a little bit better um, when you do it that way. 
but you can also put your own graphic here in the middle. You can draw, like if you want a background that looks like, I don't know, a sheet of paper, or if you want you know, something that's in the background, an actual image, or if you just want some kind of textured effect, you can put that in the background as well um, by using this background image. So I select background image, I browse, and I'm gonna pick this, this is just another graphic that I drew. Um, and if you use the background image, it ignores this background color property. But now if I run that, and look at the um, books now, you see how there's sort of these little white lines? That's the graphic that I drew. Um, I just drew like a 20 by 20 um, pixel image, and it just tiles that image across the entire length of the, um, of the dialogue. So, you know, you can really customize um, how you want your dialogue to look by using um, custom text windows there. That's what I wanted to cover in this video. In the next video, we'll get into a couple of more things uh, regarding GUIs. We're not done yet, so uh, join me in the next video, guys.